Today we're diving into the world of the pileated woodpecker. I'm Jeremy, this is Eric, and this is the wild around us. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> That's the sound of the pileated woodpecker. Yeah. Eric, how's your Latin? The pileated woodpecker is known by its Latin name of Dryocopus pileatus. And basically it means capped or crested tree chopper. That makes sense. So with its distinctive red crest, large crow-sized body, and a 28-inch wingspan, they're one of the most iconic birds in the North American forests. Sure are, Eric. They are also widely found throughout the eastern half of the United States, up into Canada, and down along the west coast of the U.S. Their preferred habitat is mature deciduous or mixed deciduous coniferous woodlands, but they're also found in younger forests as long as they have large dead trees in them and maybe other types of patches of woodlands. Yeah, I've seen them come to the dead trees that I have in my yard, mm -hmm. but what I really want to know is, you know, can you tell me more about how much territory these birds generally need? Yeah, you know, it can really vary depending on what resources are in their territory. Uh, something like food and nesting trees make a big difference, but anywhere from like 130 to 400 for the most part, but all the way up to even a thousand acres wow. at times. Hey, did you know that although ants are a major part of the pileated woodpecker's diet, they're also eating other insects and then even right. things like fruits and berries, nuts, and poison ivy, the berries of poison ivy. Ooh, ants and poison ivy, I'm feeling itchy already. Yeah, I know what you mean. But to be fair, there are other songbirds and smaller woodpeckers that also eat the seeds from this plant. Although what makes this bird truly remarkable is its incredible adaptations for its tree-dwelling life. Absolutely. Let's start with the beak. The pileated woodpecker has a long chisel-like beak, perfectly suited for chipping away at tree bark to uncover insects like ants and beetles as that would be hiding underneath that bark and even inside the inner parts of the tree. They leave behind large rectangle-shaped holes in the trunk that is evidence of their excavations. What's really amazing about this bird is its uniquely adapted tongue. Now, its tip is barbed and it can extend up to four inches beyond the end of its beak. This allows it to probe into crevices and extract its favorite snacks, ants. Wow, but how does it fit that long tongue inside of its head? That's a great question. A woodpecker's tongue is wrapped around its skull with a specialized set of bones and muscles called the hyoid apparatus. Now this structure anchors at the front of the skull in the bird's upper nostril. It splits into a V between the eyes and then the two arms wrap around the skull passing over the top and around the back and then meet up at the base of the lower beak. When the muscles contract, the tongue sticks out, and when it relaxes, the tongue pulls back inside the beak. Their beak is also used to create that loud drumming sound that you hear when they peck on hollow trees. That can happen, that drumming, up to 25 times per second. It's impressive to me. That is. This behavior is used to define their territory and communicate with a mate. Yeah, and they can, they can hit that tree with uh, forces of up to 1,200 Gs. You know, just thinking of that gives me a headache. So it used to be thought that some kind of cushioning or padding around the skull, of the, the interior of the skull, would protect a woodpecker's brain from injury, from all that pounding. But now we've learned that if that were the case, they'd actually have to spend a lot more energy and peck a lot harder 
in order to do the same amount of work. So, you know, we still don't really know exactly uh, how they're able to not have that physical impact on their brain, but it's kind of thought that it's more about the size of the skull mm -hmm. being a lot smaller than like our human skull that mm -hmm. actually has more of an impact on, on that reduction um, of the brain trauma. So it, it's pretty cool. I just, I love thinking about how uh, we're always learning and science is always kind of expanding that knowledge. Yeah, that, that's fascinating. But we also know that, you know, um, woodpeckers, they have so many ad uh, cool adaptations, but it's not just about the beak. Mm -hmm. um, their, their feathers are also really distinctive. Now we mentioned how they have a red crest, but do you know uh, that you can determine males from females looking at the size of the red crest mm, yeah. and by looking at the color of their mustache or the malar stripe as, as it's really known as at the base that's located at the base of their beak. Yeah, I think that's so cool. Yeah. So, it, so the male has a, has a larger red crest than the female mm. does. And he also has a red malar stripe um, at the base of his beak. The female's kind of a, a dark gray, almost a black color to hers. Yep. And then, of course, they both have the uh, white and black markings on their wings and that undulating flight pattern that is distinctive to all woodpeckers. And so it makes them easy to recognize as they fly overhead. Yeah, the pileated woodpecker's feathers are really amazing. They're, they're beautiful, they're functional. Uh, they also provide insulation against mm -hmm. the cold temperatures, especially around here in New Hampshire. Uh, but they're and there's one of the things I always find really cool is their tail feathers are extra stiff so that it's almost like a tripod. They can lean up against that uh, or maybe even a better analogy is a kickstand. They kind of put that tail up against the trunk of that tree to help support them um, as they're, they're feeding, as they're pecking that hole or as they're drumming. The other legs of the tripod that you were mentioning, uh, those are the zygodactyl feet. Zygodactyl, I know you really like that That's term. a great term, yeah, zygodactyl. It is. So the term zygodactyl basically means that they have two toes that are um, at the, the front of their foot and then two toes at the back of their foot. Most birds tend to have three toes in the front and one in the back. And as a result of that, that makes them really good for holding on to the tree for support on the trunk, you know, while they're doing their excavation, whatever. Right. So the pileated woodpecker is really well adapted for clinging to the sides of the oh, yeah. trees. I, I love it because they can be upright. They can even kind of be upside down or a little bit sideways. Yep. Stiff tail feathers help them balance up in that tree a lot better. Uh, it's sturdy beak for pecking into that tree trunk and getting those insects using that long tongue with uh, barbs on the end of it and piercing through those insects. But I always wondered, uh, you know, what about the uh, sh wood shavings and things that mm -hmm. are flying up in their face. Mm -hmm. um, how, do they, how do they get around that? They do have feathers for this also. So the feathers are gonna be long, they're gonna kind of be yellow, they're gonna be at the base of their bill here, and it's going to prevent any of the sawdust from coming in, but they're also gonna have um, a nictitating membrane. That, that third eyelid that they have that's kind of opaque that can cover their eyes so that when they are pecking at a tree and they're having all this debris come up to their face, their um, third eyelid actually slides over their eye to protect it, kind of like safety goggles. Mm. And this is going to, along with those stiff feathers in the nostrils, this is going to prevent them from having any breathing issues or any problem with the debris, you know, flying off into their face. Nice. Pileated woodpeckers use trees in so many ways. Yeah, they do. Um, for nesting is one of the ones we haven't talked about yet. You know, the male does the majority of the work. He's going to excavate the nest cavity in a dead tree, and the female may help, but it's usually going to be the male, and it may take three to six weeks to complete. And he may dig down ten to twenty-four inches into the trunk of the tree, of course, having to go in first a couple inches, and then the inside of the nest really, instead of being aligned with anything, it's just going to have a couple of leftover chips from the excavation. Mm excavation process and that's it that inside of that tree trunk that seems like a pretty safe spot to be and tough for predators that might want to try to get in there and get those eggs or chicks so it does seem like a safe spot 
uh, the female, she's going to lay three to five eggs in there and she's going to incubate them for about 15 to 18 days. Once the chicks hatch, both the male and the female will take care of the offspring and it's somewhere in the neighborhood of about 24 to 31 days taking mm -hmm. care of those mm -hmm. chicks and rearing them. Pileated woodpeckers are amazing and important residents of a forest ecosystem for yeah. sure. Right. Uh, what, what, what do you think people can do to help pileated woodpeckers be in their, maybe their backyard? All right, well, people have a number of different things that they can do. I mean, the first thing is that if you've got a dead tree, a snag, um, or a tree that's dying in your yard, particularly if it's near the house, you wanna make sure it's not falling on the house. But if you can, yeah. you cut off the limbs and you leave the trunk standing so that it can be used as either a possible nesting tree or at least a feeding tree for those birds because they do need large trees in order to nest in. But the second thing that people can do is they can actually construct appropriately sized nest boxes for pileated woodpeckers. Mm -hmm. And then finally, there's another important thing that a lot of people tend to forget, and that is not to use insecticides on right. their property because feeding on insects, these animals, if they're ingesting insects that have been treated with insecticide, of course, that's gonna have an impact on their health and their ability to reproduce. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm excited to get out and try to find some pileated woodpeckers or evidence that they've been there uh, out in my own backyard, maybe even here at the Science Center, I'll yeah. head on out. Yeah. But whatever you do, don't forget to do the important thing and get out and explore the wild around you. Thanks for coming. And we'll see you next time.